Hello, everybody, and welcome to our lecture on the global environment in which businesses operate. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at the concept of globalization and how that impacts businesses in the marketplace, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. So without any further ado, we will jump right into our content today. So here are the things that we're going to be discussing. First off, we need to define what globalization is. Then we're going to look at the, some of the benefits of globalization and how the overall concept of globalization impacts the financial markets and our ability uh, through personal finance to grow our wealth. So when you start thinking about globalization, uh, I wanted to be able to start you off uh, with a quote. I think that would be the, the most appropriate here. And this is from Jack Welch of Global, or excuse me, of General Electric, who said that globalization has changed us into a company that searches the world, not just to sell or to source, but to find intellectual capital, the world's best talents and greatest ideas. So think about that for a minute. Uh, here's Jack Welch, CEO of a very prominent company, understanding not only the short-term, but the long-term benefits of globalization and how he can best utilize that concept uh, for the betterment of not only his company, uh, but for his consumers as well. And as we go around the world looking for those best talents, we can clearly see that that leads to an increased interconnectedness of many different things, whether it be cultures, businesses, or technologies. You know, the more we look at different cultures and how we can, you know, uh, apply what they do in their culture related to uh, business practices or how they can improve on uh, in current technology or even be innovative and grow new technology, the way that each individual culture can interconnect with another uh, for the betterment of its society is really one of the key benefits of globalization as we move forward. And along with that overall benefit of interconnectedness, there are several others, or several other benefits of globalization that we will discuss today. And here they are. Uh, we'll discuss outsourcing, prices, human rights. Now, some of you might not think that human rights is, uh, well, I didn't expect to see that on that list, but we'll, we'll talk about that and see and uh, make sure we uh, apply that properly. Productivity, innovation, employment, and capital flow. So all of those we'll be talking about today. Now, when we think about outsourcing, think about this scenario for a moment. Um, obviously, I can't see a show of hands, but just quietly think, how many of you have ever picked up the phone and called uh, a customer service representative about a particular product that might not be functioning the way, you, uh, the way you had hoped it would be, or you had an issue with a specific product or company? Uh, there's a good chance that uh, when you talk to someone from customer service, that you talk to someone that you could identify through their, uh, through their dialect and through their uh, through their language, that they were not necessarily from the United States. Uh, companies have done a, a very good job at taking their customer service call centers and outsourcing them or locating them in other countries. This has had a dual positive effect on not only the company, but to the country with which it outsources. And I'll explain. First of all, you can see here by this map of the minimum wage per hour uh, in U.S. dollars that the United States has uh, in Canada has a very high minimum wage, whereas some other countries across the world may have a low minimum wage. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> that they are living in poverty. What it means is, is that relative in U.S. dollars, uh, a country here in Africa is making a lower minimum wage, but perhaps that minimum wage is at or above the standard of living in that country. So by outsourcing these jobs to other countries, uh, the current company in the United States is saving money by not paying that minimum wage, uh, that required minimum wage that we would have to pay to a U.S. employee or a Canadian employee. And they are adding to uh, the overall uh, economy in other countries because they are now making a wage, again, that is either at or above that country's current minimum wage. Now, some might <clears throat> classify that as an exploitation of cheap labor. But once again, cheap is relative to which country you are in and how much money is needed to, uh, to have a sufficient uh, cost of living or a standard of living. 
um, while exploitation could happen, and I'm not saying that it doesn't, um, the jobs that these folks would be offered in their own country and the wages that they would receive would probably not be as ho- of a high quality or of a high rate than they would if they were getting a job from a U.S. country that had outsourced this particular need, a call center, to that country. So one of the benefits, again, of globalization is this ability to outsource, and it has a win-win scenario for both parties involved. Now, this next one, I think everyone has, has benefited from from time to time, right? Prices. Uh, you walk into a Walmart or to any other store, and you are able to see that prices are relatively low. These prices are low because businesses are no longer competing at a local level with other businesses in their, in their local community, but they're competing on a global level. And whenever there's competition, that always seems to let, competition lends to lower prices. Why? Well, you can't overcharge for one thing because then that person won't go there anymore. Lower prices keeps businesses in check from charging uh, way, too many, way too much money for prices. But lower prices is also the benefit to whom? The consumer. When you look at this map of Walmart and its global presence, you can see how that they have had such an impact on the globe. That keeping their prices low and competing with other folks has, been able, has added to the global economy in a good way. Businesses around Walmart now have to be competitive in that they have to keep their prices low in order to compete with Walmart, or Walmart will just dominate the retail space. So competition, once again, has given the consumer a chance to purchase products at a lower rate, driving prices down, and leading them to spend more money in the economy. Now, another benefit of globalization has been uh, the human rights issue. And once again, while folks might not have thought that human rights might have been at the top of their list, uh, it certainly has brought a lot of awareness Uh, about human rights from other countries. Things that used to be done in countries in secret are now wide open because the media has chosen to cover them. Why? Because there's a presence there uh, that didn't used to be there before. Greater media coverage has led to awareness of the lack of human rights and the promotion of equal rights in the world. Uh, This particular map shows uh, how female suffrage or the right to vote, which was not always prevalent in the world, has begun to grow steadily since the early 1900s, not only in our own country, but in countries across the world. Genocides that used to take place possibly in secret before the advent of social media uh, no longer happen because of the advent of social media and the fact that we are now living in a a global environment. No one is an island unto themselves. Uh, If something happens uh, in a country around the world, chances are we're going to hear about it. Now, this certainly doesn't mean that all human right atrocities have been solved, but it certainly has opened the door uh, to exposing those countries that uh, might not have the best track record as it relates to human rights. And then it gives businesses that, um, that pressure not to do business in those countries. So if you know that you're uh, doing business in, say, um, you know, Iran or Iraq, that might not have the best track record on how it treats women. Now that that has been exposed on a global level via the media, uh, businesses might think twice about um, having operations in those countries because they don't want their businesses to be boycotted by those who are in favor of human rights. The next benefit we'll discuss is productivity. Uh, With the advent of globalization, now countries are free to focus on producing what they're good at. Um, now, this may have some, some folks talking about the, uh, the theory of comparative advantage and that, you know, the United States has an inherent advantage over, say, Australia. Uh, that's for another topic to discuss. Uh, but as it relates to productivity, we no longer have to rely on ourselves to provide our people with every want that they have. While we can, we can certainly look to other countries, say like China and Japan for our technological needs, uh, instead of, you know, building them here. Uh, We're free to focus on the things that that we're good at. You know, we, as the United States, we are uh, extremely uh, efficient, or at least one of the world leaders in in medicine and and educational reform. Uh, So we can focus more on those things and be, uh, have more attention towards um, 
you know, not only being good at those things, but being even better at those things. And then using the other countries that are good at what they do and through imports and exports and trade agreements, we're able to uh, increase our own productivity and, and not rely on just ourselves for everything that our country might need. While we're certainly capable of producing many of those needs, um, being able to engage in trade agreements certainly uh, alleviates some of that some of that immediate pressure. Innovation, innovation is a fantastic benefit of globalization, one that we are seeing in the here and the now. Um, with the onset of COVID nineteen, we are able through innovation and through globalization to share data in real time with other countries look to their great minds and their best educated people and come up with ideas on how to solve this crisis, uh, probably in a much shorter time than if you had one country working on it and then another country working on it, and then this is not right and then this might not work. With everyone being able to talk to everybody and being able to you know, have real time data, being able to use that in a real live setting, uh, being able to produce those things together rather than find out, well, this might work here, but it might not work there. That is the a very definition and inspiration of innovation, finding solutions to problems in a quick and timely manner. Uh, globalization in, this, uh, in the innovation space could also be uh, characterized as global collaboration, uh, where they're able to come up with new products as well as improvements on existing products all for the benefit of the global citizenry. We have also seen an overall decrease in global uh, unemployment uh, through globalization. So another benefit is, is the employment. When you have, as I discussed with innovation, you have the best minds and you have great ideas and you have a more demand of goods and services. Well, high demand means that you're going to have a low supply of workers. Well, when you have a low supply of workers and a high demand for the job, then wages continue to go up. Uh, the supply of workers that was low might be able to be, it might be low because they're not good in one particular area, but really great in another. The more innovative we get, the more we're able to expand our business enterprises and reach more people on a global scale, then that supply of workers continues to, uh, continues to shrink, but the demand for them is so high. But when you have a high demand for workers and a low supply of workers, by definition, you have a very low unemployment rate. Prior to the COVID-19 uh, virus outbreak, the United States was experiencing one of the lowest uh, timeframes of, of unemployment in its history. Uh, over the last 50 years, uh, we had not seen these types of unemployment rates in African Americans, in women, in Hispanics, and overall labor participation rate. Uh, those things hopefully will come back as we, uh, as we attack this virus and and find a, uh, a way to get not only America, but the globe back to work. But when you have that high demand for workers, then it automatically raises the wages because as we know, price always follows demand in the supply and demand model. And finally, we move on to capital flow. So when a company increases its foreign investments into, uh, you know, in, into another nation, the valuation of that company goes up. Well. When that happens, the wealth of investors goes up because now that business is doing more business. So as businesses continue to thrive, in the Walmart example, as Walmart increases its global footprint and their business continues to grow and to grow and to do well and to make money, those who have invested in Walmart will obviously do well. The stocks that you bought 5, 10, 15 years ago will continue to rise. Therefore, you are making money. Uh, this map shows a lot about where the capital flow is going throughout the world from different countries. Money is moving from place to place. It's doing that because of where uh, each country best chooses to make their investment decisions. And hopefully for their particular country, they are making money. Whether it's Europe investing in North America or in Japan, whether it's Latin America investing in North America or in Australia and New Zealand the capital flow throughout the globe and the ability for each country to invest in other countries for the purpose of improving their own country's economy is a very valuable benefit to the globalization model. So that's it guys. That brings us to uh, the end. To recap, 
uh, what we went over. We definitely wanted to define what globalization was, discuss the benefits of globalization, and see how those uh, the globalization impacts uh, financial markets and our ability to grow wealth. Um, tomorrow, we will discuss the, the other side, the negative impacts of globalization. There's two sides to every coin. And uh, tomorrow, we'll actually give you that side of the coin. Uh, moving forward for our assignment, what I'd like you guys to do is to record a brief video detailing your thoughts about how the United States benefits from globalization. Once again, we are not an island unto ourselves. Uh, we can do many great things here in America, and uh, we always have the, uh, you know, wanting to make sure that our citizenry is great, but we still benefit from having our neighbors, uh, whether across the big pond or to the north and south of us. So a uh, short video about how you think the United States has benefited from globalization. Upload that to our Flipgrid uh, discussion area. Any questions about uh, what you uh, what the specifics are will be a rubric on Google Classroom. So uh, once again, guys, that concludes our our, uh, our lecture for today. I hope this all finds you well, and we will visit again soon. Thank you so much.